Hello, I'm looking at a charger today called the Sky RC B6 Neo. And when I'm asked to do a review, often I just get sent a photo and I thought, oh, it just looks like a regular charger. What I didn't expect it to be is so tiddly. Look at it, it's absolutely tiny. Now I know this runs off um, DC or USB via um, USB-C and having like a, a PD compliant thing to plug it into, but that's about all I know. So why don't we open it up, see what's inside and we can try and charge and discharge some batteries and see what this thing can do. Okay, so in the box, let's get open and see. Some protective stuff. Uh, some quick start guys. And the unit itself, which as mentioned, is small. Look at that little thing. There is a screen protector here. Let's just take that off. There you go. That is it in all its glory. We have here a up to 6S balance connector. We've got an out here, so that's where the charge goes. That's XC60. And presumably, yeah, we've got in. We've got DC in there, 10 to 28 volts, or PD input with the USB-C. I need to see if I've got a USB-C which actually has a PD compliant plug, because I think most of mine just, you know, go at five volts, and that obviously needs to run at uh, 10 volts at least. But it all looks uh, pretty simple uh, in theory. Let's find some power and uh, we'll plug it in and see what happens. All right, let's have a play. First off, even before powering it, you can use this as a battery checker. If you just plug a balance lead from a battery in, like this one here for this big 4S, it comes up and it tells me all the cell voltage, which is about right, because this was put into storage charge, so I expect about 3.8 volts. Obviously, as mentioned, we can run this from an XC60, and this is great as a field charger. You hear the little fan go on there, it's the fan's just underneath. Couple of warning messages, and it's ready to charge, essentially. We hold down that enter key for a few seconds. We get into parameters, and we can go through all the sub-menus. Your normal things, the uh, timers, like how long it will do a battery for. You've got the system settings here, you can change the language, you've got minimum input voltage. LC backlight I'm going to put to high because I'm filming with lights. The volume is low. Obviously I could turn the beeps off. It's quite useful. The completion signal. I'll have that on repeat because if I'm sat in the office I might just miss the odd little one. Of course got DC power. This thing can put out a DC power signal. Um, right now it's set to 12 volts at 5 amps. We can go way up all the way to wow 27 volts that's a lot now the reason something like dc power is very useful on something small like this is it becomes an excellent little desktop power supply and if you're using a soldering iron like this where you've got the little barrel plug and you can plug it into an xt60 to plug into a battery this is fantastic i'd show you that but I am still in the middle of office reorganization saga and I don't know where the cable for this has gone. Last time I had to do some soldering, I had to use this big old soldering iron with a massive tip on it, trying to do something gentle was, was not fun. Anyway, that's, that's good news and we can actually start it from there as well. Uh, battery meter, well it just tells us what's going on. Looks like we've got a, a factory setting reset if we want to. System info, hardware version, firmware version. Firmware is upgradable via the USB port when plugged into a computer. Got a serial number there. Uh, we've got the system upgrade. So, yeah, you can upgrade the system, and that's about it. So, the other thing I managed to do was actually find a PD power supply. It's not ideal because it came in the tablet I reviewed. Uh, not long ago, but it's got a Euro plug, which means I've got one of the world's dodgiest plug converters here to use. But we'll give it a go and see how that is, because I want to see how this how this charges. This one comes up and tells us our power input is uh, we can do 30 watts, 20 volts at 1.5 amps, which I guess is not bad coming. So what I thought I'd do is grab a quick battery, and we've got a sort of typical flight battery, a little 1300 4S. So if we plug this in here i've got a little um balance lead extension which i find particularly useful 
because you've got a little bit more room to move your batteries around. It goes in that way. Right, that tells us what our battery is currently on. And it tells us the cell voltage is there. And the got the battery internal resistance here that doesn't quite seem right because it's showing it as uh, zero. I don't know if it needs to do something to record that. There you go. Anyway, if we press return, we can then select our type of battery. We've got LiPo, Lilo, Life, uh, HV, LiPo, NIMH, NICAD, and PB. We are using a LiPo here. Our battery is 4S, it's got that. We've got balance charge, regular charge, storage charge, and discharge. It's all good. Obviously, balance charge is what you want to do. And condition 4.2 volts. You can change that slightly between um, plus and minus a couple of volts. Charge current for this guy is going to be 1300 milliamps or 1 1.3 amps. And then we're ready to start. Ah, and then it gives me the battery um, internal resistance. So it can see what it is, which is reasonably high. And the status screens we've got then show us the voltages, and the main screen shows us that we're charging at around 1.3 amps at 20 watts. What I'm going to do, because it's got a little timer, is I'm going to leave this going and see how long it takes, because this is on uh, the little PD charger as you saw there. And what I'm liking about that is you can see how small this is, and you know there's nothing too big. Um, in the in the PD plug itself. If you compare that with a regular, relatively small mains charger like this one, you can see this is this is quite a lump. This is mostly due to, you know, it's getting AC input and it's doing a whole transformer thing um, before it does anything. I mean, this can probably charge at much higher ampage, but this is so diddly in comparison. I kind of like that. Anyway, I'm going to leave this going. Uh, see how long it takes to do this battery and then we'll look at the discharge and storage options Okay, I just heard a little alarm. It says it's done. It took 33 minutes 51 seconds I'm Just gonna see if it makes the little alarm noise again. I had to put it on repeat. I think it doesn't seem like it's gonna repeat it It goes do 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 sort of thing Anyway, that's got everything at uh, 4.2 Spot on So I guess we hit the end button and then we're ready to try discharging it just before that a word on how many amps it will do so yeah what most people want to know is how many amps can I charge at and that kind of depends on many things I have got this adapter which I just found and if if that's going to focus will it focus it basically says that for 12 volts it will do two and a half amps or 30 watts. The, the two and a half amps refer specifically to 12 volts because what happens is you basically divide the watts it can do by the voltage and that should give you the amps. So in this case 30 watts divided by 12 equals 2.5. So this will do up to 80 watts on the PD thing. If you've got a proper PD charger, i.e. not this dodgy one I found, it will do 80 watts. This one, as it shows here, will do 30 watts which is not not ideal and and all we can get but what can 80 watts get you so 80 watts divided by 16.8 which is the voltage for a forest battery will give you 4.76 amps of charge if you want to do a 3s battery uh, 80 watts divided by 12.6 that would give you 6.3. This one, because it will only do uh, 30 watts maximum, is only going to give me uh, like less than 1.5 amps basically. So if I try and charge this great big 5.2 uh, amp hour 4S battery, if we see the amps build up and you see the corresponding watts there 
in fact it's not quite getting up all the way there it's pulling 23 watts which is getting to about 1.5 amps so if we had a better plug we'd get more like 4 amps uh, or 4.7 amps of power but as it is with this plug it doesn't do as much now if you were to plug in um, here using this DC input it will do up to 200 watts which is the same as this big lump will do on um, AC power so just bear that one in mind now of course there's also nothing to stop you using parallel charging boards like this one uh, same regular rules apply about how you'd fit things in uh, and you've got the slight advantage here of being able to use XT30 as well. Obviously, you can have adapter cables going to the XT60, to XT30s, JSTs, whatever you like, that will work. Um, but obviously, you've got to look at the limitations of what, if you're using a proper PD adapter, what 80 watts will give you. Um, you can still parallel charge, of course, it will just take longer because it won't be able to put as many amps in as a bigger charger might do if you were putting, like, you know, you want to do. Uh, for 6S 1 amp batteries you won't be able to put them at 1C using this. I must just point out as well that the screen is very clear you can see this kind of weird lines on it that's that's all part of how it's being filmed I'm afraid the slight reflect reflections well, it's, actually it's not even reflections I can't see anything my eye it must be just the camera picking stuff up anyway we've charged this so let's see how the storage charge thing works because that's fairly important. Now I didn't check the individual cells of this and the reason being why is because you can go in and calibrate each cell so if you charge something you use a multimeter you trust to measure each cell and if it's out you can actually go in and adjust the reference ratings for each cell and have it perfect that way. So for me I am going to storage charge this uh, 3.8 volts and our current charge, not that we'll need it because we're um, discharging 1.3 amps and our max discharge current is 2 amps so let's start that and see how that goes and well we're getting about 1.10 amps using 18 watts certainly the fan is coming on here because obviously that is going to all go as heat but again I've got a, a fully charged battery it'd be interesting to see how long this takes to bring it back to storage charge so I'll let this run and uh, we'll take a look in a while well it's done and that's not the right time I was just popping through at some point to see what the uh, the levels were and, and they're exactly 3.8 now and what I managed to do was reset it and I had to start again I think it's been about an hour I don't know if this camera has uh, its own timestamps, I, I can check that, but about an hour, which is kind of what I expected. Now, of course, I could then plug this into a, a great big adapter like this and run it on DC and then get 200 watts, but I think that's a bit over the top for this little charger. I think the whole idea of that is you're you're using a little USB to power it, and that's kind of the, the point. It, it's very small and compact. Obviously, in the field, you'd use something like a, a big old LiPo plugged in the back so you can do charging, but at home, I don't think you'd be using this at home if you really wanted something bigger I don't think you'd be using this as your dedicated charger well there you go I think it's a pretty cool little charger especially if you're just starting out you don't want to spend a long you can just plug it into USB if you've got the right PD adapter and go off I mean it's not going to replace this one because this does a lot more um, amps basically and can charge things quicker and I can just plug it in and go but this is this is really nice as a little desktop supply. This will sit there and, and work when I can find my soldering iron cable. The only little word of caution I have about here is to make sure you've got the right PD adapter. I had a look at this one. As I said, this is uh, 30 watts it can do, it's 12 volts. And what I did, I went into Amazon and I put in a little search term as PD charge 80 watts. And I know you guys love to tell me how many tabs I've got open. And when I had a look through, um, the amount of watts you get is, is is fairly typical I think these are kind of made mostly for sort of tablets and phones so often it's 20 watts 30 watts the sort of things I see like these MacBook Pro chargers are 96 watts or 
there's these, these uh, a bunch of ones at 65 watts. A little bit more expensive, between 20 and, and 30 pounds, or probably 20, 30 dollars in the US. But I think it's worth definitely getting something that can do enough power. Otherwise, you need something that can plug in the, the XD60 port and provide your, your DC power that way. But yeah, pretty nice charger. Just make sure if it's something for you, it can put enough throughput through. But certainly the price is right. It's, it's a fraction of the price compared to something like this. So again, if you're starting out, it might be a, a useful little thing to get. Anyway, hope this has been helpful. I'll catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video. So thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.